This interview is being conducted on October 13, 2006 at Niles Public Library in Niles, Illinois. My name is Kate Wallachy. I'm speaking with Mike Kozira. Mr. Kozira was born August 15, 1921 in Chicago and now lives in Niles, Illinois. Mm -mm. No? I don't live in Niles. Oh, live in Chicago. Yeah. He still lives in Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> he learned of the Veterans History Project. Did you learn from another veteran? Is that where you heard about it? What, this? Yeah. No. Where did you hear about it? About the postcard? No, about the Veterans History Project. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I saw, I came here to see that demonstration you have up there now. Oh, we came to see the dis photo display. Yeah, Mr. The photo, photo one display. of the fellows told me about it, and he said, oh, you should see, it got ships and everything, you yeah. know. <laughs> so I come to see the ships, and there was no ships there. Yeah, not so much ships. <laughs> too many people running around. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's kindly consented to be interviewed for the project. Here's his story. You go speak. Speak. Tell me whatever you want to tell me. Okay. Go. Well, uh, to begin with, I, I, I enlisted as an apprentice seaman on October 27, 1942, in Chicago, and for a three-year period and duration of the war. And I was born on August 15, 1921, you said that. And my rating I held, I've held as an apprentice seaman Seaman second class, machinist mate second class, and machinist mate first class. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Service schools, I went to steam machinist uh, mate uh, training on a ferry boat in Brooklyn, New York on 5843. Uh, then I was transferred to the Captain of the port in Newport, Rhode Island. On, and then I, from that point, I went on to an 83 footer um, boat, just, you know, it's a patrol boat. And uh, then I went to the, to the Constitution, Constitution Pier and I got on a ship called Wakefield. And uh, I was trained at Manhattan Beach training station when I first went in, and uh, the separation center was at uh, number nine, Detroit, Michigan. I uh, active duty from November 12, 1942 to the 16th of October, 1945. That was uh, two years, 11 months, and 20 days. I had 10 days to go and I could have got a good conduct medal, but I was anxious to get home. <laughs> and uh, that was it. And of course, I think I told you that on the phone. Uh, yeah, I got married and I got an honorable discharge to the button and all the rest that goes with it. Did you get married before you finished your service or yeah. did you? Yeah. I got married in the service. I didn't know people did that. Well, uh, we were in engaged, so, so to speak, and uh, for a couple of years, and then I uh, had to go to the service, and I tried to get into the Air Corps, and they refused me on account of my eyes. I went to the Marines, it was the same reason, and I said, why are they, re you know, I, I had glasses on. They said, what if happens if you lose your glasses? You won't know where you're at, what you're doing, or anything else. Or you'd be shooting somebody that, you know, is your own, your own, uh, what do you call it, mate? or something, well, anyway, and that's how it ended up that I uh, tried that service, and then I tried, and all, I had to, all I had left was the Army, oh, the Air Force, I think I said the Air Force, didn't I? You did. Yeah. Uh, Army, and then, uh, and I tried the Navy, and the Navy wouldn't accept me either on account of my eyes. So I was almost down to nothing, and no, I had to be drafted in the Army. And one of the friends I have told me, he said, hey, why don't you try the Coast Guard? And it's Coast Guard, what the hell do they, what the hell do, they do? He said, well, you know, they guard the coast and everything else. And I thought, well, I'll see what it's like. It was just like a Navy man, they tell me. It just like, like a Navy man. So I went down there to get in, uh, to enlist, and, and the doctor examined me. He said, oh, you've got high blood pressure. And as I have, he didn't say nothing about the eyes. He just said high blood pressure. 
He said, I'll tell you what, why don't you go out in the hall there and sit out there for about a half hour or so, and I'll call you back when I'm ready for you, and, and we'll see what your blood pressure is, you know, whether it's come down or not. In the meantime, I heard somebody say <laughs> they needed 45 minutes or something like that, and, and then, of course, uh, I didn't know where it was coming from or who was saying it, and it ended up that I, uh, doctor came out and he called me over and he checked me over again and he says, fine, you're okay. It went down. How, how'd you get it down? <laughs> I says, I don't know. I, you know, I, that's it. He says, you're in. So, okay. And the next morning, I, well, when that night I went home and told my mother and dad I was in it. And then, of course, uh, they didn't even know what the Coast Guard was. I didn't either. But uh, <clears throat> the next morning I got a call about six o'clock in the morning about uh, coming down to the Army uh, draftees, where all the draftees were being, you know, had to report. And I was supposed to report that morning, but I joined the Coast Guard, so they, I told them, I said, well, I, 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 said, I, I enlisted on the Coast Guard yesterday. <laughs> they were supposed to let you know. He said, well, they didn't let us know. But good luck to you. Have a good <laughs> long life. And I said, yeah, I'll try. And it ended up that uh, that's how I got into the Coast Guard. And that's I got out of the Army. I didn't want to be in the Army, uh, mostly because I've seen a lot of stuff that happens there. You know, you sleep on the mud and everything else. I, that's not for me. But anyway, uh, you can't, you can't be, beggars can't be choosy. They got to take what they get, and that's it. Uh, and then after that, why well, I ended up here, what I just explained to you here about uh, being uh, I went for boot camp. I went to boot camp. I got to tell you that, yeah. So I told you that, didn't I? Yeah, I think I told you that. What was it like? Boot camp? Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a school, you know, it's like a school. They uh, teach all, the, all about the navies. And they told us right out, the Navy and the Coast Guard are one and, you know, the same. Except that one's got Coast Guard, one's got, we had a little shield over here. That on showed your sleeve? On the sleeve, yeah. It showed it was a Coast Guard. And the Army just, I mean, the Navy just had rings around it. We had rings around her too, but we still had that little shield on her, uh, sewed on her. And uh, I was in the, in the Coast Guard there, and I would have, oh, they teach you how to tie knots. They teach you how to uh, read semaphore, you know, that's a flag stuff. You've got to know how to read that. And they said they don't do that uh, teletype anymore because it's, obsolete. You know, they don't do that anymore. And uh, things like that. So they says, we don't know where you're going to go in the service, but we're sending you out to uh, this training station. You know, it, 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 well, that's where I was. I was in that training station, Chatham, or not Chatham, uh, Manhattan Beach. And then from there, after you just spend uh, 30, 40 days, whatever it was, then you got transferred out of there. And I got transferred out, and I ended up in uh, uh, Chatham Lifeboat Station in uh, Massachusetts, so Cape, Cape Cod. So what were you doing there? Well, we walked the beach. We had to walk the beach. Yeah, really. Had to walk the beach for five miles, and at the end of the five miles, there was a clock. There was a clock over there, and you had to carry a clock. So you went over there, and when you got to that thing, you took the key out, put it on, you know, punched the clock, put the key back and then go back. And that's what you did. And, and of course, in the meantime, you'd be looking out in the water to see if there was any any boats or anything that you could see that was not, uh, you know, it's supposed to be there or whatever it is. Uh, there was no way you can tell them. You gotta, you gotta run to the station and tell them, hey, there's somebody out there or something like that. So it's kind of a, something, just something to do, I think, walk five miles, really. Did you have, did you, how do you, how do you walk on the beach for five miles? Don't you get, doesn't it take a well, long time on the beach or is it like a rock beach? Uh, well, here's the story, you know, when, a, when the tide is out, you can walk on, on the sand like, like the sidewalk, you know what I mean? The tide has got to be out. Yeah. And that's uh, one of the things you, you had, to, and then if, if the tide was in, then you had to walk further up where the sand was hard. And of course, when it, when it got uh, hot and dry and everything else, and then it was bushy, but it wasn't, it was never hot and bushy because I got there in the wintertime, you know. <laughs> it was a bad thing. 
And from there, I, uh, I didn't want to stay doing that. So I, I went to the Naval Station and I, com uh, I complained over there that I didn't want to do what I was doing. And they asked me what I wanted to do. And I said, well, I wanted to be, uh, you know, a, a machinist mate. And they said, well, what do you know about machines? And I told them I was learning to be a tool and die maker and so on and so forth. And then they said, uh, well, that's great. You know, he said, maybe we can get you a, get you a place. And I said, OK, you know, thank you. Well, about two weeks later, or maybe three weeks later, I got a letter from the district, uh, district number one out there in Boston. And they told me that uh, I should report to New York at a training station and uh, at a certain hotel, Sutton Hotel, and I would be going to school over there, machinist made school. And that's down here now. I, I told you about that. It's, uh, what is it? Um, I don't know what that says. It says ODCG03ND. Yeah, I don't know what that is. And then either. it says Rexta, Boston, Mass. Yeah, that's why I had to go to, I don't know, a uh, uh, receiving station. That's what ah. that is. That's a receiving station. And then I went to Boston, and then from there I went to New York. Anyway, I went to New York and I was uh, on, the, on the ferry boat. You know the ferry boats? Have you been in New York? No. Oh, well, I got ferry boats that run between the Staten Island and the city of Staten Island and, uh, and uh, Manhattan. And it goes back and forth, you know. And some of those have been run out and then they had them on the side like like a, like a senior, you know, so you can put them aside. They don't have <laughs> nothing to do with them anymore. <laughs> And, and then they uh, teach you all about the steam engines, which was a very good, good thing there. And, uh, and you had to work on different things, and they tell you about water pressures, and they tell you about steam pressures. And they uh, gave us a good, good training on, on, that, on that little ferry boat. And uh, that's the way it was. So then I, when I went back to, to uh, I had to go back to the receiving station because uh, I was through with the with the uh, walk on the beach. So they uh, and then all of a sudden this this ship came came into being and then they had to have men for that. So that's where I got I got put on there. On the on the Wakefield. Yeah, on the Wakefield. And I got put on that ship and as a, as a, as a steam machinist. So and what were you doing? On the well, at the sh on the, the ship, I had a, I had to uh, watch the gauges, you know, the steam gauges, because they carried uh, 200 pounds or 400 pounds of superheated steel, and that you had to be careful because if anything went wrong, uh, that steel that uh, steam can just cut you right in half. You know, that's how powerful it was. And uh, the different things about steam engines, and, and they had, uh, oh, I can't even think of names of the, some of this stuff. Anyway, that's that's what I did, and, I, and, and then I was a, what they call a travel man. A travel man is the, <clears throat> the fellow that goes up to the, you know how they get the wheel for turning, I mean, not turning, but uh, uh, for the engine room, right. for the engine room. And of course, then the engine room, or the bridge would send a signal down to the engine room, and then the engine room would have to answer. And then you do open this valve accordingly. And then you open that valve, you can't, you can't do that. You gotta go a little at a time. And you look at your gauges and they'll tell you how much you go and how, how they, slow they wanna go or how fast they wanna go. And that was where the job I had. I had I was a travel man. And then of course I was a, uh, a counter man too. I forgot how this all works, but anyway, uh, Every time that thing made a revolution, the, the shaft made a revolution, it would not register on a counter. And as it registered on a counter, uh, you'd know how far you went in an hour or whatever, you know how far you went in the water, in, in miles, you know, uh, depending on uh, how fast you were going and things like that. But that was figured out by the bridge. I didn't have to do all that stuff. Just get the numbers is all I had to do. And that's what I did. And I, and I, uh, uh, I did that. 
and that's what I, I, I call a travel man, was me and another fellow. Uh, one fellow had what they call a port engine, and the other fellow had the, the starboard engine. <coughs> they had two engines on the ship, and uh, they had to be run by two people, and then, of course, we had a, ca a, a lieutenant that was in charge of the group, and he made sure you were doing what, what, what the, they called for. And that was what, what happened there. And uh, I'm trying to think of what else might have happened. I, not, not much. I mean, what, during the storm we had one time, uh, not a storm, a, a night shift or something like that, and it ended up that, that there was an a emergency call. You know, they wanted a quick stop because uh, there was something out there and they didn't want to run into it. And then you have to start closing the valve, but you can't close it too fast because you had 400 pounds of superheated steam. You know, if you did that, you'd blow up the ship. And uh, that's how that, how that worked out. That was pretty nice. Uh, so did you stop then? No, 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 we didn't stop. They, they swerved on the side a little bit because uh, what I heard later on, I don't know how true it is, it was a fishing boat that was in our way. But then they said, well, it wasn't a fishing boat. Maybe it wasn't a fishing boat. Maybe it was the Germans came over and put a boat over there so our ship would slow down. And if it slowed down, then the submarines had a good shot at us. Mm. So you see, you hear all kinds yeah. of things. It's what they call <laughs> scuttlebutt. <laughs> it was. It's scuttlebutt, you know. It's like uh, here you hear rumors. The rumors in the servers is scuttlebutt. Yeah. So did you ever hear that? Yeah, I have. Did yeah. you? So where were you going? Where was the Wakefield going, or was it just? Oh, we were patrolling? going. We were going to uh, no, no, no patrolling on the Wakefield. What we were carried you troops. Oh, it was a troop ship. Yeah, it was a troop ship. Yeah. Yeah, we we're, were they used to carry uh, I don't know fourteen thousand or sixteen thousand men or something soldiers. So were you taking them, you were taking them from from Boston or from? We were taking them to Italy. To Italy. Yeah. We went to, uh, I think it was, we went to uh, England first and left off some troops over there. And then we got back and, you know, right away, we leave, leave right away. And we headed down towards uh, near Portugal, you know, and, and Spain and all that. Well, I was in that area. And, uh, Whatever happened, or I don't remember, you know, remember what happened, other than the fact that you, uh, you had to answer the bells right away. If you didn't answer the bells right away, you'd be a hell of a fool. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe how much they give you. But anyway, from there, I, uh, I got on this thing here, and I spent, uh, oh, let's do a couple of years on this thing, 18 months. I got to down here someplace I can't. Uh, <laughs> it's Helen you can't see, you know. Really, it's terrible. Yeah, I know the feeling. This is terrible when you can't see. Oh, I must, it's almost uh, 17 or 18 months that I spent on there. Well, that was, it was nice. It was good service, good food, yeah. nice, nice bed, uh, you know, a sack to sleep in, not a hammock. We had uh, springs on the bed there. So were you separated from the troops that you were, oh, yes, you were moving? Oh, yes, yes. Did you eat with them, or did you just... No, we ate by ourselves. You know, the, the Army had their own uh, kitchen crew, and uh, we had our own kitchen crew. Yeah, we had our own uh, meals and everything else. And whoever made it all, I don't know. That's that's between the cooks, you know. I didn't have nothing to do with that. And uh, what else? Did you meet anybody interesting? I mean, you were from Chicago, so that's a pretty diverse place. Did you did you meet people that were a lot different from you? <laughs> no, I, not not at the not in the way when I was in the service when I went in. No. I met oh met because the group I went with was all from Chicago. You know, we were all from Chicago. They all went out there, and they all went to the boot camp where I went, what they call boot camp. 
And then after you got through with the boot camp, the, each, you know, I mean, they'd say 10 go over here and 10 go over there and 20 go over there. And, and that's how I ended up at this uh, surf station. You know, I was in a group that got called to go over there. And uh, I spent about three months over there, I think, three, four months in the wintertime. And of course, uh, I complained to a couple of guys that was there. They'd been there for a few years. And I said, geez, this is a hell of a place. And it's like a hell hole. <laughs> Nothing to do, you know, and you're out in, a, uh, out in the ocean there, partly, on like an island, and they tell you, well, uh, listen, just wait till the summer comes. That's when you have a good time out here. Is that right? Oh, he says, the beach is a load of women. <laughs> you know, yeah. oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I told you in the meantime, I went to, to find out about going to, to getting a different position. And then, of course, when the spring came, I, I was shipped out. So you missed all the girls. I did. Oh. I did. But what would I do with them? <laughs> what would I do with them? I couldn't do much with them. But uh, I never tried either. <laughs> now, they, uh, they had some uh, movies in your boot camp that showed you about being careful going out to town. You know, you get liberty, you go to town. And then they show you a, a woman that's, well, she's nude, and then she, she's got the... Riddled with venereal disease. Yeah, they got all that <laughs> stuff, you know. And, and then uh, some of them are this, and some of them are that, you know. But you can't trust any of them, can you? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you could. <laughs> Maybe you could. <laughs> Excuse me. But uh, this is what happened. I, uh, uh, I remember them telling us that, and, and of course, I kind of stayed clear of them. Of course, I was, in, you know, engaged to my, my wife, and I didn't want to come home with something that uh, would make her sick, and then she'd be saying, you, you played around. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't want that. We had a couple of guys on the ship that, uh, that uh, went to England. First time we went to England, you know, and they got ashore a little bit. And they went back, and then as they were going back, one of them had the clap. Another one supposedly had syphilis, I don't know. But when they come back to the uh, port in Boston, and they want to, they can go home, you know. I mean, they, they live in Boston. So they uh, they couldn't get off the ship because they had that disease. They didn't want to pass it on to their, not them, but the yeah. uh, captain and all that. They had strict rules, you can't go to her because, well, what am I going to tell my wife? Say you've been, uh, uh, I, you, you were late for the ship or whatever it was. They had different excuses. Yeah. Just say, and you're being uh, uh, extra duty or something like that, and you can't get off the ship. So you see, it's. I mean, that they had their reasons for doing those things, and you can't blame them. Of course, uh, being man with all the babes on the beach, <laughs> you got reasons too, but. <laughs> You know, you just kind of, anyway. And uh, what else can I tell you about this outfit? Well, before you enlisted, um, what were you doing? I was working as a, 20, right? I was working as a tool and die maker. I'm learning to be a tool and die so maker. So you're like apprenticed? Apprentice, yes. Apprentice tool and die maker. That's what I told them over here, you know, and then they sent me to this machinist school and I thought I did pretty good uh, in the machine school. I uh, knew a lot of the equipment that they were using and stuff like that. But being on an old ferry boat, you know, the thing don't move, don't do anything. It just sits there in the water. Then you've got to work on the boiler and how to get the tubes out of it and find out how the boiler is, is made. You know, it's not, uh, it's not where they throw everything in there and, and a big fire. They have a fire in there, but it's got to heat up all these tubes, and, and the water keeps running back and forth. And some of these furnaces, they have to use uh, distilled water. And if they didn't have distilled water, everything would rust out right away, you know. Oh. Like your iron. Yeah, right. And that was what, what it is. So I, uh, I used to get $114 a month. Yeah. Uh, you were wealthy. $114 yeah, a month. That's right. That's what it was. When I discharged, you know, with its, for being a machinist made first class. So 
So when you, what did you do with your $114? You sent it home? Yeah. Well, uh, she was getting a, a, a subsistence, a subsistence uh, check because I was in the service, you know, I was married. So she was getting a check and I was getting a check. So when did you get married? I got married uh, on May 23rd, 1943. Huh? So very soon after you, well, after was, you joined up. Yeah, right, right. I came home on leave one time and uh, when I told my wife, uh, I got to leave because I told him I was going to go home and get married. She said, get married? She said, I'm not getting ready to get married. I said, well, what do I do now? <laughs> she said, I don't know. I said, when I go back and you're going to say you got married? And I say, no. And they're going to say, into the who's gal? Yeah. You know, and, really? I said, I guess that's what they do. I, I don't know. And back and forth, okay, we made a wedding plan and we got married right away. And that was it. So that's, uh, that's 63 years ago. Mm. We're married for 63 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how it worked out. And, and of course... Uh, so what did you do with your check when you got paid? Did you play cards? Oh, sure. You play cards all the time. Yeah. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And sometimes uh, some guy comes over and says, borrow me 10 bucks, will you? Give me 20 bucks. I need 20 bucks right away. You know, okay. When you pay me, I'll pay you back when I get my check. Okay. Hey, where's my money? I, I, I had to use it for something. I'll give it to you. Don't worry. I lost more money that way. <laughs> really? I would think. I mean, there's nothing written down. Uh -huh. It's all by word. And, and like you're saying, you're going to do something for me, and I say no or yeah, and then you can't believe it. How could you believe it? I mean, that's what it amounts to. Uh, this is the separation of the sever uh, service. I was separated on, uh, oh, this is terrible, uh, Kathy. Anyway, I had 10 days to go, they told me, and if I wanted to stay, they would, you know, give me a liberty for 10 days. Is this the date over here? 10, 16, 45, maybe? I don't know, what does it say? Yeah, 10, 10, 16, 45. Place of separation from service, Detroit, Michigan, uh, October 16, 1945. So, and I, and I enlisted in the October of uh, whatever. November, right? Of 42? Yeah. See, you see that better than I could. Yeah, well, it's got good contacts. Have you? Mm, I can see about I that. I don't have any contacts. You got contacts? Yeah. Really? I wonder you're always smiling. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. It makes it it's a lot easier when you can see, I think. Yeah, oh, yes, yes. I all I have to do is just, I go to church and I and I want to sing the song or something. I go, oh, my <laughs> God. <where is> <laughs> really? But that's the I problem. lost this side. Yeah. I lost it. I haven't got this side. One eye. I'm a called, I'm what they call a one eye bandit. <laughs> 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 uh, let me see if I can get some more stuff here. Uh, you want to see some pictures? I think this stuff here is uh, all, you know, separation center and stuff that, I don't know if that, oh, here, this is State of Illinois gave me a side station, too. For having served patriotically and faithfully in the armed forces of the United States during World War II. Yeah. That's really neat. I've seen that before. I saw somebody else with one. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, they. Yeah, I forget really now if they nice. gave us a hundred dollars or something like that. I, I can't wow. remember anymore. It's not a bad old. state, There's I suppose. There's another one, see? Ooh, your machinist mate school completion. Yeah. Look at that. 7th of May, 1943. With a mark of 3.40. Is that good? I don't know. I guess so. No, I got a, I got the, you know, the, the thing on my arm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a nice. Sounds good. Yeah. So what, when you were learning stuff, did you, did you have teachers? Did you have, who was teaching? Yeah, Look oh, at that. That's the guy. Look at you. What a great picture. Could you go for something like that? Yeah, sure. I'll tell, don't tell Kenyon. He doesn't have to know. Really. Who? My boyfriend. You don't have to tell him. Shh. It's a secret between us. Who is he? Yeah, well, see, there you go. Huh? Oh, you don't know where he's at. <laughs> <laughs> at work, I think. Look at that. 
Yeah. What's the skin that one too? That's almost like this one. Yeah, you got a different hat on. Okay, so how come this one has a white hat and that one has a blue hat or well, black hat? This one was taking pictures and showed I was in the Coast Guard, and this one is just a everyday cat. So do you, where are you in this picture? Do you know? Because yeah. you're in front of a, a back or drop. I, I think it's one of those machines that you you know you sit in the machine and you put some money in and press the button and then. And you're miraculously at sea here. Yeah. But you have your glasses in your pocket. I see them. Well, that's why I had those glasses, glasses when I was in the service. I had glasses in the service. And you didn't lose them ever. No. Even though they even though they told you what if you did. That, well, that's what they told me, but uh, no, that's. I wanted you to see that. Now I'll show you some pictures of the ship. Okay. This is uh, one thing we got to be careful of is, is the, the age of it. This is all pretty old. Now this picture here shows me and a buddy of mine. Uh, he's from Chicago, and I was from Chicago. And he was going overseas, and he'd come on our ship. And we met. We met on the ship. But he was going. He was in the army, and I was in the Coast Guard. What's his name? Do you know? Uh, yeah, I. I yeah. This is Andrew V. Cott. 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 That's Cott. it. K O T T. This is a W. Somebody. Oh, uh, listen, that thing has been be beating around. You know, everybody wants yeah, to see it. Yeah, you know, it. I got special tape for this, actually. Oh, have if you? If you want, we can fix it for you. Yeah. I don't know, W something, maybe bowl, so bowl, so cold. Yeah, something that is missing, too. Yeah, somebody's missing. I was, this was in, a, in the Chicago Tribune. You? But I can't remember the date. Ah, well, we'll look it up. I bet I can find it for you. Could you? Yeah. How could you look it up? We have a database, an online database of the Tribune back to the be beginning of the Tribune. Is that right? Yeah. Well, this would have to be in uh, 43, 44, somewhere around there. 44, maybe. Yeah, I'll look. Yeah, because I, I got on the ship after, after you know, a while, and then, uh, and then of course, we, I met uh, him, and, and, and we were on a deck by a gun over there. And I just, you know, this the guy, the guy taking a picture, he says, point out like you're, you're pointing something out. <laughs> not, not there, you know. <laughs> Do that. So, so you okay. so you met somebody you knew. Was it, yeah. where, where did you know him from? From the neighborhood. Yeah. He was in the neighborhood. What, These guys. What this, neighborhood did you grow up in? What neighborhood? Yeah. Hanson Park. You know where Hanson Park is? You know where Reese Park is? No. I'm a suburban girl. Are you really? Where? Niles? Uh, Berwyn. Berwyn? Lagrange. Yeah, I know Berwyn pretty well. I have friends out there yet. <laughs> yeah, they, in fact, she lives over in, right near that uh, high school. What's the name of the high school out there? Morton. Morton, yeah. She lives out there. So you, so you met, so did you, did, did you make friends when you were, when you were in the Coast Guard? Did you oh, make sure, friends with make friends with everybody. Yeah. I had no enemies on the ship. Yeah. You 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 gotta be careful, you know, if you <laughs> got too many enemies you know, with some dark night they'll come over and <laughs> throw you over the side. That's it. <laughs> Was that a big problem for you? Did you see other people have enemies? No. No, no. No, that was no problem at all. I, I, I got along with anybody or anybody. As a matter of fact, when you, one trip that we made, uh there was a lot of fellows from Chicago on that ship. And one of the fellows came up to me and he says Hey, uh, sailor, yeah? He says, uh, how's the ship out, you know, when you're out in the ocean? And I says, well, it's just, you know, just like any other ship. Yeah, he says, but I mean, it's a, you know, rock and everything else. Oh, yeah, it rocks, you know, as soon as the waves come, it is a rock. I'm afraid I'm going to get seasick. Well, I says, I'll tell you how to stop from getting seasick. You could stop. And he says, how? I says, well, don't drink any water too much water, and don't look down the side of the ship, you know, how everybody, oh, look how fast we're going, you know. That's the worst thing you can do. It'll make you sick right away. 
even if you go out on a boat with your boyfriend. Yeah. And you go out with him and, and you start, oh my gosh. <laughs> really? So that works, huh? Well, I, I, it worked for me. And then, of course, this guy that I told him to, he came back and thanked me. He says, hey, I, the trip was over. And, uh, uh, and he was getting off in Liverpool, England there. And, and he says, thanks a lot for helping me out. You know, and I said, well, that's good. So another time, I met a fellow like Sam Wayne. And I asked him, I said, we're taking you over. And I said, let me a ask you a question. Can you do me a favor? And he says, yeah, what? I said, well, you know, these, we take the troops we're taking troops there all the time, but we don't know what happens to them. Where do they go? You know, you can't fi file all those troops in one uh, in England. They have to start moving around. Well, this was after D-Day already. This was after D-Day. So uh, uh, he said, uh, "What did I tell you about that?" Oh yeah, he says, "Okay, I'll let you know." And then during the war, they had what they called uh, uh, V-tape. You know, like a like a green mail? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had that during the war, I think. And he, he told me he was going to write me a letter. And I said, okay, good luck to you. You know, he said, okay. He, said, he doesn't even know where he was going. He knew he was going to England. That's about all he knew. So, okay, he got off the ship, and then we got back. We went back to the States. Come back to the States, and they told me you got mail over there. You know, oh, I picked it up, and it was a email from this guy. He was shipped to the bottom part of uh, England. And he, it was D-Day plus two or something that he got over the seas, over the channel, and he got hit. And he says, and, they, and he ended up, and now he's in the hospital in England. Hmm. That's how fast it was. They, they train these guys here, put them on a boat, take them over there, yeah. shoot, shoot. If you don't shoot, you get it, and they take you back. Yeah. So that's what happened there with that guy. He was, a, he was a, not this guy, but uh, one of the fellows there. So I'll show you some pictures that I had. Now, we've got to be careful with these because they're really older than you are. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. I'm in. Yep. Give it to a woman so she knows how to handle those things. Well, I'm a librarian, you know how we are. Yeah. You know, we can scan this so there. that you have another copy, too. So we shouldn't cover up the microphone. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is a ship I was on. This is that Wakefield that I showed you here. Yeah. Uh, this is when we were coming in in the morning or leaving the, at night. I can't remember now what it was. No, we were coming back to the States. That's what it was. We had a load of troops. A load of troops on there. Uh, you can see how they're loaded on there. Yeah. And here. And then, of course, when you're getting close to the States, this comes out and greets you. The blimp? Yeah, and, uh, and a plane or two. Really? Oh, yeah, they come around. They can see the submarines coming up. If they're coming up down there, they can see them from up there. They just drop a bomb on them. That's it. So they don't they come too close. Anyway, that's uh, the pictures that I have, some of the pictures I have. Oops. Terrible, isn't it, uh, Katie? Yeah, I think you got it folded right. You know I can use filmoplast on it to keep it, to fix the tears if you want. Oh, I don't know. it's the you're, library, we have you're, a... You're too busy already. Yeah, well, that way we can make, uh, I think you folded it like that. You can contend with me. This way, then. Yeah, you still have to contend with me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, wait, this one's in half first. That way. There you are. But I can do that Leave for you if you woman. want, you know, that's what they... Is that right? Yeah. That way they won't fall apart quite so fast. And yeah. we can make a digital copy of them also, so you'd have a, so you'd have another copy. Coming in in the morning. We we're coming in in the morning here, and wow. they took pictures. Now, this, these pictures are photographs. Yeah. That uh, that they uh, there's another one. So you welcome home. Get that. Do you know? Well, this one's night June seventeenth, nineteen forty-five. Yeah. Right. So what about this one? It says 
5,000 yeah. members of the 15th Air Force from Italy and the Mediterranean, first airmen to return from the front on their way to the Pacific. Huh. I don't know what date. I don't know, but it's nice out. That's what it says. Weather fair tonight. Oh, <laughs> is that what it says? That's what it says. So when you were so when you were on board ship, you you <coughs> had quarters that were separate from the troops that were oh, yeah, being yeah. transported. Right. Did you have your your own your own bed that yeah, you slept yeah. in? Did yeah, they had decorate? a post. They had a post, and on each side, the post was one this way and one this way. And I had one side, and the other side had another side. So who did you who did you live with? With all these uh, guys. Yeah, do you remember any of them? Oh, <laughs> not a, not their names anymore. In fact, I went to a, a ship's reunion, and uh, one of the guys that I went to, I wanted to see there, and I saw him. And then I heard a couple months later he died. A guy named Slattery, good Irishman, you know. And he used to sleep above me. And uh, that's what, what happened. That, you know, you don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't remember the names of a lot of guys. One guy we call uh, Frenchy. We call him Frenchy, but his name was Bob Buell. Uh, Bob uh, uh, Trudell. Trudell. So why did you call him that? F uh, Frenchy? Yeah. Because he was a Frenchman. So what did people call you? Polak. Yeah. Yeah. You can call me anything you don't want. You know, I didn't care. Uh, then they had a guy named. Uh, Bill Thelm, Bill Thelm, who's, I got a picture, I think, I don't know, we're taking too much time now, aren't we? No. No? It's fine. When the tape runs out, we'll flip it over. Okay. Now this is the troops coming in. Maybe you can find the date here. No place. Yeah, it probably is on the other side. No, I don't think it's on the other Maybe it is, I don't know. I never looked for the dates. Homecoming is transport docks here. Well, it gives you everybody's address. See what it says here? 1,200 casualties in group back from Italy area. And <laughs> this is the same one? Yeah, this is the same trip, I think. Yeah, looks like it. They, uh, they brought back a lot of casualties. These guys are all in sick bay. May 25th, 1945. Oh, you've got good eyes. You yeah, spot it yeah, like yeah. that. That's the side doctor there. Yeah. Oh, it's all him. May so 25th. Yeah. So ahead. you met people who were who were coming back who were. Did you have a hospital on the ship? Did you have a. No. Well, we had a hospital, yeah, but uh, sick bay. They call it sick bay. But uh, okay, some picture. of them. There it is. Boy, boy, what a some of them what in sick bay? Yeah, some of them uh, were in sick bay, but uh, not that many, because we had our own troops in our, I mean, our own uh, crew that had to go to sick bay. Now there's a picture of that plane again, and I went to the newspaper and they gave me these pictures. Really? Yeah, I asked them for the pictures. They said okay. So I had them, and I still got them. I'll show it to you right away. Yeah. And they have a, a ship's reunion every year. But I haven't gone to, to one for a couple of years now, maybe five, ten years. I'll fix it. Okay. <laughs> So you did you did you used to go a lot? Did you did it, has there been a reunion? Recently? Well, reunion, yeah, they have one every year, but uh, it costs a lot of money to go there. Really? Well, Where do they have them? They have them in New York now. Oh. They used to have them in Massachusetts, wow. and now it's in, in uh, uh, yeah, whatever it is in New York. That's interesting. Yeah, they have, but they don't have the memory you said. I mean, we used to have. Uh, 1,300 or 1,400 crew, and then little by little they all dropped off. 
So mm -hmm. there were that many of you. There were fourteen hundred people who were crew, and then there were, and then you were moving 14, six thousand troops 14, at a time. Fourteen, eighteen thousand. Wow. Or uh, sixteen thousand. Fourteen to sixteen. So it must have been very large, the ship. Yeah, it was. It was a. Uh, of course, you don't. You're, you're, it's not your time just to know about these ships and what happened. There's a picture I showed you. That's amazing. Yeah. Here's another one. Really this is big. this is the old SS Manhattan. They called steamship Manhattan. That was owned by private private, you know, property. And when the war came in, then the government took the ship over mm -hmm. to move troops, and they and they uh, changed the name to USS Wakefield. Wakefield is where Washington lived, you know, uh, Washington uh, George. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that guy, you know. Yeah. Look at that. And that's right along the dock there, which you can see the the dock. And this is all the life life rafts that they had to use them. That's where they would get them. But you never had to. Huh? No, no, no. Thank God for that. We had a uh, five-inch gun here and a five-inch gun in the bow. And we had a storm, like a hurricane or something, out there in the, in the Atlantic. <coughs> I thought for a minute there the ship was going to go over. You know, almost almost thirty degree list. You know, it'd be all over like that. We thought it was going to go right into the water, and uh, it didn't. Then it bounced back. And uh, we were lucky, but the, the ship goes down in the water, you know, like that, on the rough sea, back and forth. One time it went down, and that gun was, or with the bow, here's the bow. That gun in the bow was ripped right off there. Ripped right off of the uh, oh ship. Yeah, it was something. So did you have other ships with you when you were moving troops. No, we travel by ourselves. So we're just at home. This is oh, great. Yeah. It beeped at you. But you can see how the deck the deck is, you know, like here's the gun down here. And there's guns in here. Where the city round things here. Yeah. There's guns in there. And there's guns up in here and here. This is a bridge. What they call a bridge deck. And they have to have guns over there too, so and the water. Yeah, when you see this water when you're when you're on the boat or the ship, you never call that thing a ship. A boat, you gotta call it a ship. If you were sitting back here or up in here somewhere and you're looking back, and that water's churning, you know, because of the of the propellers stirring up the water, it's a beautiful sight to see that thing. Oh, maybe for ten, fifteen miles back there, you know. It keeps churning and then it's finally goes back into the, into the ocean. So that's uh, that's some of the photographs that I have. Wow. So that's, yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, I thought that's what they had here when that fellow told me that they... Uh, What's that? Huh? What's this in your hand? What is that? Oh, uh, that's going to give up the ship, the damage control. Veterans Association, they kind of let you know how you should behave yourself, or how you really how you take care of the ship. That's a lot of a lot of reading. Wow! I think it tells you everything about the ship. Yeah, it does. It was uh, where did I see it? What are you looking for? Yeah, how long it was? Seven hundred. Seven hundred and five. Yeah, seven hundred and five feet. Wow. At the water line was 688. So that's the part that's sticking out over the water. You see this? Yeah. That part sticking over out in the water, and this this part is out in the water. Wow. This ship made a trip to uh, Scotland with the troops before the war, you know, before D-Day. Yeah. And it, when it came back, it caught fire. Yeah, it went on fire somehow. And it burned most of the ship. So they didn't know what they were going to do with it, and they decided they were going to rebuild it. 
And when they rebuilt it, that's when I got out of the church. Really? Because before they had uh, uh, rooms, you know, because it was state rooms. People that used to travel with, you know? Yeah. Well, then all that was taken out, and then they put these boats in there, and all these sacks, and that's how they had that many troops on there. The same with the crew. They had the same kind of a deal. There was nothing, no special, uh, no special things for for them. It's just the same thing as everybody else. And then, of course, what else? The, the communication system. Yeah. Gave you the propelling machinery, the horsepower. Right. 30,000 maximum sustained speed at full load displacement. Yeah. 21.5 K. Yep. Look at that. Oh, there it is. So what does that make you? This is all the people on board. Coast Guard officers, Navy officers, Coast Guard enlisted men, Marine officers, Marine enlisted men, Army officers, Army enlisted men. Wow. Yeah, a lot of men on there. That's a lot of men. Yeah, I know. There's and then you were moving ownership. people, so you had a whole bunch more people also. Yeah, right? that's right, the troops. Them, on the way back, after D-Day, after D-Day, uh, we were in Liverpool, England, and then all of a sudden we were being going to be loaded. And I was sleeping that morning, and all of a sudden I hear on the deck above, you know, and they're all like, like cleats on the shoes, mm -hmm. hitting the decks, you know, and I made a lot of noise. And it was German soldiers coming on our ship. They were coming to the States, prisoners. So we had prisoners. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, really. I'll show you pictures of the prisoners in there. So did yeah. you did you talk to them? Did they keep them separate, the prisoners? Well, you could talk to them, but I, I couldn't talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> I looked like I could talk Polish. <laughs> <laughs> but we did have uh, a couple of them that could speak Polish because they were uh, mixed in with the uh, Germans, you right. know, and they and they spoke Polish, and then you'd, they would tell you that they were they were fighting someplace other and here and there and. and uh, it's just, it's just a mess, as all was. But what else can you do? So how did you feel about the war, given your experience? How did you feel about well, the military and about war? You know, the only time you have to worry about a war is like we have right now. You know what I mean by that? We've got a president that says he wants to have, he wants to get a rack. Now, why would he want a rack? There was no, no, nothing coming out of the, out of rack. It was, uh, what they call them, uh, terrorists. So now they, uh, and then they, they wanted to get in there. And I think, to this day, he wants to get in there on account of the oil. Yeah. You know, in other words, if, we, if the United States takes it over, then he can, gobble up a few oil wells and you don't have to worry about working. So do you think that the, that, how did you feel about other wars since the Second World War that the United States was part of? Uh, I didn't think uh, they were very interesting. Yeah. Especially in the, in the Vietnam War where I heard there was a lot of, uh, uh, they, I forgot what the, what the stuff is that they, they were, uh, A bomb or something or other that was uh, when they breathe that stuff, it would kill you, you know, almost kill you. Yeah. Or maim, was that what they call it? Maim? You know, in other words, you, you couldn't do that. Yeah, nothing. like Agent Orange. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh. Whoops. Yep, you're throwing stuff on the ground. Whoa. I'll oh. get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Well, it's always interesting to me to hear what people to hear what people have to say about what? about what to hear what people who who've been involved in a war have to say about war. It's always interesting. Well, you know, uh, nobody likes war. I don't like wars because I say to myself, "What did I do to that guy? What did he do to me? He didn't do nothing. Why should I shoot him? He wants to live just like I want to live." That that used to get me. I used to. Couldn't figure out why they always 
Oh. Oh, look at that game. Get the back of there. Oh, well. So did that bother you when you were in the service? Did you think about that when you were? Uh, in the service? Yeah, kind of. Because I felt like uh, if I had to shoot a gun, I never fired a gun. I mean, I fired a gun, but not, you know, at anybody. Uh, I, I had to carry a gun when I walked the beach. I had to carry guns in case there was a invasion or something, you know, somebody coming across uh, over the water. You had to worry about that stuff. And, of course, uh, uh, my, my thoughts are, uh, if, if they, if, if, why are you going to war? Well, what do they do to you? You know, it's, not, it's, it's all politics. Everything's politics. There's no way you can beat that. They do what they want to do, and, and all those guys and everything else, they vote with what they want to vote. The blue one you were looking in. Yeah, I'm going to put these oh, in there. Good idea. So did you ever have any inter entertainment while you were on the oh, wakefield sure. or while you were? Yeah, I did. Like what? Like what? Yeah. No, you had to look. Uh, wait, no, I'll show you a picture here. Whoops. Just to see if we got it on the back. Oops. Look at that. Do those lifeboats have little holes in the bottom of them? Yeah. What for? Huh. <laughs> If, it, if you didn't, they'd probably tip over. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's got holes in it so that, uh, you know, you get down there and, and you're not, the hole is sitting in the water, you know, just a little bit below the water, mm. above the water. No, I didn't know that. You didn't? Yeah. Well, now I do. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, this is uh, prisoners on our ship. Take, out for an airing. For, you got to take them out for an airing. Was it, is there a band? No, no band there. There's a band in the middle. There's people with saxophones. Where? There's here, I'll give you this. There's a, there's a drummer back here and there's saxophones up there. Well, maybe it's the orchestra then. You had an orchestra? Yeah, they had an orchestra. Now you need to tell me about that. There was an orchestra? Yeah. There was, well a guy didn't know how to play something. They they got together and they, maybe this is not the troops. I mean the uh, prisoners. That's so wait. So was it? Did you do anything on the board the ship? Were you in an orchestra? Did you no. play softball? All did I did was eat, eat and sleep. All you did was eat and sleep. I see. Yeah, here's some pictures from Liverpool, England. Wow, look at that. That's Liverpool, England. And more of Liverpool. So did you did you get to visit when you when the ship stopped? Did you visit Liverpool? Did you visit? We uh, we were able to get off of uh, not the first three or four trips that we went to England. We made uh, 13 trips to England, I think. Wow. And uh, how would I say it? That's more of England there. Yeah. Chester, it says. I think this is the, uh, the prisoners here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are the ones. So they look like prisoners. Yeah, yeah they're but prisoners. That, so where did you get these pictures? Did I don't you know. take them or did no, you? No, I couldn't take them. I had no camera. Somebody had them, and, and uh, I guess they, they said, well, you want some pictures? I'll give you some pictures. They're looking pretty sweet. Yeah. Now, I think this one here is when the when the uh, German died and they had a, a bury them at sea. Yeah, I got a picture of that too in the, in the book. I'll show it to you. Do you know who that is? No, I don't know who that is. This is a chief that was on a ship. You know, he was boatsman, boatswain mate. This is Jack Dempsey. Really? Yeah, he was going over to cheer up the troops and everything else, so he came on our ship and he was going there. Oh, neat. Yeah. He was one of those asked. Where's the convoy? 
guns. That's all we got. We have two little guns. That's all we got. Well, I had more than that, but I mean, I, I, I just got scared myself when I, when I went out to sea with, with them, and then they, where the hell, where's the convoy? And one of the guys that was on a ship previous to me, he said, oh, we don't, we don't have no convoy, we travel by ourselves. Well, how come? Well, if you're going uh, 35 to 38 knots on a ship, there's nobody that can keep up with you. And that's pretty fast, you know, it's like going... 60 miles an hour in the 40 mile zone. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So if they felt that the submarine was going to hit them, they would have to uh, be pretty close and then, and then, you know, but the way this ship traveled, it was like a snake. And it'd go around in a circle and it was like a snake. And they had sound equipment on their ship that uh, they can sound out if there's anything below them, like metal. You know, they'll sound that out and say, they, uh, uh, there's something down there and they got to find out what it is, you know, of course, uh, they, they call for help our way, they'll call the air, air force or whoever it is that's close by, I mean, maybe, what, 20 miles around or 50 miles, or maybe a, a 200 miles out in the ocean. I mean, they got where they had a call, you know. Uh, some of those uh, planes couldn't go all the way out there. And anyway, that's what, the, what they did. And that's, that's how we uh, uh, spent the time out there. Now this thing here, that's the patrol boat. That's the one I got on it. I was sick for six months. I couldn't get off. I couldn't get sick. I mean, stay well. Every time I take the... You're kidding. The, the, you know where the dock is? The dock and the rope. And they take the rope off the dock. Yeah. I'm sick. <laughs> so that's how I ended up on it on this ship, because uh, my the skipper here says that uh, he can't stand it anymore. You know, for me getting sick every time we, we left the dock. Yeah, I would and, imagine. Yeah, and uh, this is the the boat that I was on. This is the patrol boat that used to patrol between uh, Long Island, or the Block Island, Block Island, and right near New York, right near Long Island, and uh, Martha's Vineyard, and that's right near Cape Cod. So you didn't tell me about this part, though. So was that was when did that happen? When were you I on that you, boat? I told you. Was that happened. while you were still while you were at patrolling the beach? No, or was no, that after no, that or that was in after between? That. So it was in between. After I patrol the beach, yeah. After that, yeah. This is when I told you I got transferred to uh, Newport, Rhode Island. I got transferred to Newport, Rhode Island. I didn't want to be, you know, walk. Uh, Playing around in there, so they I told them, asked them if I can get on the ship. So they said sure. So I got on the ship and and uh, <laughs> I sick for six months. I couldn't I couldn't take it. I couldn't. Then when I got on this big one, you know, in here when you went on the ship, you hit the waves and you go like oh, that. Oh, you bounce up and down. Yeah, right. Or like that. But with this ship, the big one. You can go like this. And that made me much a more sick slowly, too. yeah, much calmer. But I got a little sick on there too, but then yeah. I, finally I caught on and, and I got my sea legs. So How long caught. do you think it took? Uh, that's kind of hard. I, I, I don't know, maybe eight or ten months. Wow. I'm, you know, for the for the boat both deals there. Then I finally got my legs, see what they call sea legs. You know, you can go on the water, go off the boat come back and walk on land and when you got sick you walk on land it was the land was moving but <laughs> you're walking <laughs> yeah that was something and these pictures that you see here was taken by me wow it's a beautiful picture the skipper the skipper here he had a I don't know where he's at there right there I think he had a camera and he wanted to take some pictures of the ship so he says I, uh, I want to you know Oh, oh wait, there's no way you can take a picture without being, without this boat being in the water like that. So they put me on a, on a buoy. You know what a buoy is? Yeah, well they pull up right to the buoy, made sure I got on the buoy, and then I had the camera, then they backed off, and then I was taking pictures. And that's how they get these pictures. Yeah, it was really, it's really something. Nice picture. Right. Yeah, that's, uh, 
Now this is when we were tied up to the dock, loading troops. See, we had an SP over here. They want to make sure nobody runs away from there. They what does he have on his feet? Hmm? What's on his feet there? Yeah, those are uh, spats, you know, they, yeah, like leggings. Leggings, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. What for? Or is it just part of the uniform? Part of the uniform for them. So that's, a, that's just SPs. You know, they had to wear, wear those things. I don't know, don't ask me why. That's weird. I never was a SP, so I never, never is, run into What that. does SP stand for? Shore Patrol. Shore Patrol. Yeah. Now, here's a picture of a couple of guys on that 83 footer. And this is Christmas cards they gave us one year to send out to your friends. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Is that how water is? Yeah. <laughs> That's that some choppy water. That makes you sick. Yeah, I would think so. Made me sick. So what did your what did your uniform look like? Besides the Coast Guard on the sleeve, what Just were you wearing? Same thing as the Navy wears. Well, what does it look like? The blue, yeah. dark blue, you know, yeah. and you have the neckerchief, a neckerchief, or you wear a peak coat, you know what a peak coat is, and then you had the, uh, either a, a skull cap that you put on your head, or a uh, uh, the white cap, the white cap, or the, uh, yeah, whatever, you had a choice of three of them. But I, uh, I only wore a skull cap and a white cap. I never wore anything else. And that was it. So again, now here's some more of the ship in the uh, dark. Look at that. Yeah. Well, that's an even bigger one of that. Photo. Yeah, that's the bigger one. There's a skipper right there. He's the guy that said, "I feel sorry for you." I can't take it anymore. <laughs> well, I, I couldn't blame him. I mean, I, you got to, everybody's got to do the job. Yeah. And I couldn't do my job because I was sick. You know, you you look at something and if you look at the water, that was it. You, you were all, all shook up. Other than that, that's about all I have on those things. And I'll show you the, the uh, book here. Okay. And you can look at it yourself. Huh? A lot of things here too. So when did they publish this? this well, this came after the war. Field. After the war. I think that uh, what, what happened is uh, by being on a troop transport, we used to carry a lot of supplies like cigarettes and candies and whatever the, you know, the, the stuff was. And they made a profit on it. Yeah, they made a good profit too because after the war was over, they had a, a, a what they call a port and a starboard watch uh, party. You know, either if you were in a port watch, you went then, and a starboard watch, you went then. It was two days. And they'd served uh, uh, lobsters. And I didn't like lobsters, I mean, I couldn't eat lobster. So one of the guys uh, says, I'll tell you what, I'll give you my bottle of champagne for the lobster. <laughs> Gave me the lobster, got this champagne. So I drank the champagne and got a little stiff. Yeah. And I behave myself. It does. Yeah. Anyway, you can look at this uh, as, as much as you want there, and I'll try to point it out as you're going along. Now this is a Coast Guard flag. You see how that... Oh, a little emblem there. Yeah. How does it say, Man, William, Dog, George? Uh, let's see. Flags. Oh, these flags. Yeah. That's what it is. Why are they named like that? I guess they got a reason for that. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't I had nothing to do with flags. And that's the same as us on the car. Yeah, right. right. That's the same one. And then, of course, it'll tell you if you read this. They'll tell you it's uh, it to be the USS Manhattan. Yeah. Does it say that over there? Yeah, it says the life of the USS Manhattan, life of the SS Manhattan, history of the USS Wake. There you go. 
So there's Admiral Russell Randolph. Wh yeah, Weishi. Weishi. He's uh, he was the admiral. He had nothing to do with the ship, you know, <laughs> except that he was, you know, except su that he's the superior admiral of the Coast Guard. It. There. Hmm. Now, see how this little shield is over here? Mm -hmm. And here's a cuff, on the, you know, on your arm, a cuff, and then this was a little shield that you would wear on top. Only on the left arm, I think it was. Not on both arms, you know. Just one arm. That would be on there. And then uh, that's how you would determine the difference between a sailor, I mean a Navy man, and a Coast Guardsman. Is that what you refer to yourself as, a Coast Guardsman? Yeah, Coast Guardsman, yeah. I always want to know. Yeah, well, another one of those admirals. Admirals everywhere. Yeah, there's another one. Well, this is Captain Harold Gardner Bradbury. I think he was the first captain of the ship before it burnt, you know. And when it burnt, he was taken off of that. So. No, could you just tell me why it burned? I don't know why. No, I don't know why it burned. You can maybe read the history on it, but this is the captain that we had. Captain Roy Livingston Rainey. Rainey, yeah. He was, he was really a good guy. Really a good guy. Very dead already. I heard that he died down in Florida. Yeah. But uh, he was really a, a square shooter. You know, in other words, you had a problem, told him. He listened to. So did you ever do that? Did you have a problem that you? No, not nothing. Sent that, up the line towards him. No. No. No, I didn't have any problem like that. I. Uh, so how did you know that he was a? Well, because of, of the uh, things that he published, you know, they, we're going to do this with his name on it, and we're going to do that, and whatever it was. And he was always gentle, you know, he was a gentle type of a man. Yeah. But he was he was a good man. Roy Rainey, right. This is, this is about the George Washington birthplace, Wakefield. Yeah, that's where the name came from, to, uh, Wakefield. So this is the... SS that's where it after, after it burnt, right? that's the way it looks. See. Wow, look at that. That's the way it looked at peacetime. Okay, Manhattan. Look at the big smokestacks. Yeah. yeah those things uh, shot up a lot of smoke. There's the history of the Wakefield. I know you haven't got time to read that. Yeah, it says, it says, June 15, 1941, the U.S. Navy turned it over to the Coast Guard. It docked in Singapore on August 17, 1941, and it was bombed. In Singapore. In Singapore. Yeah. But that's not where fire came from. It came from uh, oh, after here. Scotland. Coming back from Scotland after dropping off troops and everything. Oh. Wait, it must say that here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it must be. Left New York, sailed via Halifax, landed in the British Isles. A fire of unknown origin. There yeah. you are. Yeah, it is. Unknown. Yeah. So they towed it to the Boston Navy Yard. So that's when I got on right after we rebuilt it. As soon as they rebuilt it, you were on it. Yeah. And well, I had to commission it. When they commissioned it, that's the day I was on it. Wow. Yeah. From that day on, I was getting sea pay. Really? Yeah, get 20 percent more. Yeah. That but that made your wife happy. Oh yeah. And the people who were borrowing money off of you too. <laughs> but I, I got kind of smart. I didn't borrow that money. Anymore. Oh, not anymore. Oh no, that wasn't. Especially when you, uh, you know, these are all the officers. One of them over there is mine. I don't know. One who of those was guys. your, who was your officer? Do you remember? Yeah, one of them was uh, 
Dobo, and the other one was ra Rainy. Uh, no, not Rainy. What the hell is your name? Dobra? Yeah, uh, Lieutenant Dobra. That's what his name was. So were they also from Chicago, or were they from someplace else? You know I don't really Chicago? know. I never found out where they come from. Oh, you didn't talk to them a lot? Oh, no. <laughs> I stayed clear of them. <laughs> Yeah, they, I stay clear of all those guys. That's the kind that they, uh, hey, do this. Hey, do that. <laughs> like they told you <laughs> now. If you, if you avoid them, then, the, then you don't get told what to do, huh? Well, that's right. Right. Yeah. Now, this is the troops loading up on the ship. For D-Day, it says. For D-Day? Yeah, it says American troops board the Wakefield to be transported to Europe in readiness for D-Day. Yeah, well, wow. that's uh, we used to take them over to Liverpool, England, and uh, see, there's a picture too that you saw with the. Yeah. And, and let me tell you about this here. Yeah. When they were loading these troops, and this is, it was a rain uh, a train, you know, the train where they came off of the train. Okay. And. On each end of that train, there was two or three uh, soldiers with machine guns in case these guys wanted to run off. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, listen, you know, they played and they had a band there playing, and and then as the band was playing, they were playing a sentimental journey. You know, gonna take a sentimental journey, and the soldiers said, "Who is a hell kind of a sentimental journey is this?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing sentimental about it, you know. They they let you know right away, and they're. Pretty rough guys when they, you know. I mean, you got to be careful with these uh, soldiers when they're when they're. In, but when the back is against the wall, you know, they they really let you have it. And of course, nothing with me, but anyway. Uh, what's this? It says the ship's gun crew make ready their guns for there's immediate there you are. action. There's our forty millimeter guns. Yeah, in case of an accident. No. It says there's a storm. Yeah. And that's uh, Liverpool, England, I think. Isn't it? Yeah, that's what it says. Yeah. See, now this is a, a floating dock here. Really? Oh, you know, sure. That, that, uh, the tide, when it comes in, in, in Liverpool, England, it can rise as high as 20 feet. So that means that if you're sitting here, go up 20 feet. That's pretty high. Yeah. And then, of course, these uh, these docks, I mean, these uh, things there, they, they roll with the water, you know, with the water. They, as soon as the boat goes up, uh, down, this thing goes up and, you know, real nice. Oh, real nice. It works pretty nice. Huh. But uh, anyway. So how long did it take you to cross? It took uh, anywhere from six to seven days. Doesn't seem very long. Well, it's you must have gone back and forth a lot. Well, I made uh, I think 21 trips across the Atlantic. That's 42 times across the ocean. So I seen the water when it was like like this floor here, and I seen it when it was way up there. So yeah, that's uh, that was quite an experience. But then it was interesting, you know, interesting to know that uh, the good Lord protected me all that time and. I was man enough to do the job that was asked of me to do. In other words, be to be on the ship as a sailor, and that's it. That's the way it works. So, did you uh, did you go to church while you were on board ship? Did you have chaplain? Yeah, we had a chaplain on there. Yeah. Did yeah. you go? No. Uh, oh yeah, I went to chat uh, for the chaplain. Some of them, uh, uh, you know, the 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 priest, they tell you that uh, you don't have to worry about whether you ate something or, you know, this and that, and go to communion, and that's it. So that's what I did, went to communion. So did they have different different chaplains for Faiths, different yeah. denominations? Yeah, they had Jewish ones, and they had Protestants. You know, they had different places where they, you know, where they had their, their group to come together. I always think that's interesting because my mother is a chaplain, so I always like to find out. Is she? Yeah. She's a chaplain? Mm -hmm. We're in the army. <laughs> I mean, in the hospitals. Well, oh, she actually hospital. works for a for a, a home health care agency for VITAS. It's a hospice organization. Oh, that's, oh, that's but she's, my mom is Quaker, so she's 
Yeah. Well, it's good. Yeah. It's good. She, yeah. she likes it. Although it's a little sad, you know, everybody right. everybody dies, you right. know, because well, of course. Of course. So. This is a picture, I think, that uh, Look at that. we hit that sea. I told you about the rough sea. And this is what happened. And they took it from the bridge out. Because if you were on, on this side, you know, on the other side there of the bridge, the water oh, would wash you right over. Oh, that water is tremendously powerful. Mm. At the same time, we lost about 2,000 rivets off the bottom of the ship. And off the bottom oh from that. Oh, my gosh. So when the ship went up and it, you know, hit the water like that, hit yeah. the water like that. And when this bow went down, then the uh, fantail, what they call a fantail, in the back, the propeller was, you know, real, real fast because... And there's no water. And there's no water, yeah, it was real fast. Then all of a sudden when it came down, the whole ship would shake. Oh my gosh, it must she have been terrifying. Right, yeah, right by the depth, the butt, what they call a bulk, is at the wall. You can feel that thing shaking like that, uh-oh. You can't be ready to break off. Oh. Oh. Scary, very scary. But uh, again, when you're talking about it now, you know, you say, well, I'm glad I was able to witness all this stuff. Uh, some guys that didn't go to the service, they were calling them draft dodgers, uh, things like that, you know. But uh, they had something they had to do, uh, whether whatever it was. But I uh, still thank the good Lord. I go to church every morning, you know. And I thank the good Lord for sparing me in, the, in through the war. And uh, this being a, a, a troop transport, they were looking more for these things yeah. than they were the uh, transport trucks, you know, where they transport uh, guns and everything else. That didn't mean nothing. Men had to shoot them, and they were worried about it. But they, they had the, the one of the one of the bulk one of the uh, compartments, is what I gotta say, where they lost the rivets, had water coming in like that. Wow, yeah. look at that. Yeah. Amazing. Really something. See that? There's a ship it's sinking there. Ship, yeah. Yeah. You gotta read that because there might be uh, It says, prison. we're going to Scotland, said the troops, when two crew members appeared with their bagpipes to entertain them. They were wrong. It was Liverpool again. Yeah. So did you know where you were going each time you left the U.S.? No. Did you, so you didn't know until you no, got there? Well, or either like that or with your scuttlebutt. You know, scuttlebutt will say, oh, we're going to Hawaii, you know. <laughs> All kinds of stuff here. But uh, the only way we can get to Hawaii was to go through the Panama Canal, and we would be in the Pacific Ocean, see, then we would know that. Yeah. But uh, nobody ever said that. <laughs> so you went to, so you kept, you went back and forth to Liverpool, and then did you say you went to, look yeah. at all those people lying out on the deck. Yeah, that's where it is. They all need sunscreen there. Yeah. A lot of them, like this guy here, you know, probably <laughs> covered himself up. What are you, what are you covering? They're all men on the ship. <laughs> What does that say? There it is. The Germans were positive a Nazi submarine would sink the ship before it reached America. See? And that's... Look at all They had about people. seven or 8,000 of those on the ship coming back to the States. So where did you spend most of your time? Were you in the engine room most of the time? Yeah, you that's, that was my job, the engine room. So did you work on, on a ship or did you... Yeah, we worked on a ship uh, when we got in the dock. We couldn't, we couldn't work on a ship out in the ocean. No, no, I mean, did you, <laughs> I'm sorry, on a shift, did you, oh, did shift. you have like eight-hour shifts? Or yeah, or yeah, we had eight hours, uh, four-hour shifts. It was four hours on, eight hours off. And then when a lot of the guys got sick and they, you know, really got sick, then we were running short because they were in sick pay. So then we were having four on and four off. So did people get sick from just the flu or from being Yeah, the flu, flu or whatever it was, it's four on and four off is what it, what it amounts to, you know. Oh, that's rough. Been exhausting. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. Rough duty. Okay. Now there's the Germans carrying a prisoner that died. See it? Yeah. And he was put on that, sh on that thing there, and you can see, see him flying there? And these are all German prisoners 
and they were singing the German national anthem, but we were not allowed to go over there. None of the crew was allowed to go over there, except the Marines. We had Marines around there so that they wouldn't uh, rebel or anything. Yeah, that's the It says, it says the prisoners paid tribute to a departed comrade singing hymns. It's a lot of prisoners. Yeah, it is. I heard it. There's thing going down. See it? Yeah. So, did you ever have any anybody else you knew on the ship die? No. Or just the. No, the I heard they, they took a couple guys off when they, and then they, they got sick in the in the hospital. Yeah. There's a. The way it is on on, their, on the deck, you would enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of guys laying around, huh? Yeah. So here you're in Naples. Yeah, this is Naples, uh, Naples, Italy. This is uh, where we got off the ship. We were able to get off the ship, and the chaplain uh, arranged a tour. And so we had to take a train, and we got in this train, and he took us out to the rooms of Pompeii. That was nice. Yeah. Whatever you see there, you know, is naughty. <laughs> Put it that way. But really, I mean, I don't, I don't know. And this is Capri. I don't want to huh? This is Capri, it says, the beautiful Isle of Capri. Capri, yeah. yeah. That's very yeah. interesting. We were in this, this rooms of Pompeii, there, there was no, no, uh, for being where the Pope lives, no shame or nothing. You know, they showed these pictures on the wall. And really? That's <laughs> really something. <laughs> it must have been very different. Well, it was. It's not something you see uh, anyplace else, you know. But it was, it was their way of living at that time, and that was what they showed. So did you see, when you were in Italy, did you meet people? Did you, like, when you were in Italy, no. did you meet people? No, regular people, I couldn't talk to them. That's Italian. <laughs> I'll tell you that what happened, though. Yeah. Uh, uh, we were going to the town, me and two other guys, and uh, this guy, one by one guy, says, "Hey, maybe uh, we can find some babies, you know." And he says uh, to a little kid, he says, "Hey, where are the women?" Oh, come in. I tell you my sister, my sister, you know, my sister. <laughs> and I go like this, see. He grabs you? Yeah, no, yeah, he grabbed him. You know, he's taking him by the yeah. hand into this building and, you know, I'm going up the stairs. And, and of course, this guy had his watch on like that. <laughs> and this kid, you know, <laughs> maneuvered it out. And when he got the watch off, he turned around and he run down the stairs. And this guy, where do we go now? We got the watch <laughs> He's a damn and we don't have a watch. He stole my watch. <laughs> yeah, that was something. That was something that, I mean, it's unusual to see that, but I mean, they had nothing over there. Mm. When we tied up to the dock like this in Italy, you could see all the kids running over the, and we took the garbage cans out, taking food out of the garbage can. It was mm. terrible. It was terrible. They, they got nothing to eat. They got a lot of wine there, but that's about all. LSPs and Italian boats ferried American soldiers from the shores of Toronto, Mussolini's powerful submarine base, to the yeah. Wakefield in the harbor. Now, at one time we went to uh, uh, Shorebrook, France, and then, and then to La Havre, France. In La Havre, France, well, maybe the first two, three miles of the, of the around, and in, in the bay there, was all leveled off. Yeah. You know, the GIs getting in there shooting and uh, English and all that. Everything was leveled down. So they couldn't get the ship troops off the ship. So they had to bring these LSTs in there and they, you know, come alongside the ship and then they go down a, a ramp and get on the ship and then they cart them into the, into the France over there. Wow. Yeah, that's, uh, that was quite a thing there. So it just says <laughs> to Marseille, France, Oran, Africa, Toronto. Italy, La Haye, and Cherbourg, northern France. So were they picking up troops, all those places, no, no. or were they dropping them off? No, no, they were dropping them off, yeah. 
in uh, and then of course one time we went to uh, I think we went where was it in, in, in Naples or someplace in France in, in France Marseille's France yeah Marseille yeah France. and they had uh, you ever heard of Tom de Monte Cristo yeah you ever see that that picture that they have and he had a hole in the wall he dug it out with his hands yeah and escaped through there did you hear about that yeah yeah well we we got onto that on island and we got to see that hole the hole is still there how the hell could he get through that <coughs> yeah I mean, it, was, it was small but then again uh i don't know how he did it yeah. it was really because we have to read our dumas the what we have to read the alexandra dumas right yeah right see right what he says and it was it was uh, really nice. Yeah. Okay. So we did get a chance a couple of times to get off of the ship to go visit, you know, wherever it was. But before D-Day, you couldn't get off the ship. You had to be ready. I mean, in case there was an uh, attack on the ship, mm -hmm. you had to be ready to pull that ship right out of the out of the bay. Otherwise, it, they'd blow the, the heck out of it, you know. And that's uh, that's what happened there. Right, what is this? Boston, they're going near Boston Harbor. Well, United States oh, ships. Ship. Was that Captain Rainey? Yep, that's what it says. Yep. Okay. And we took. A lot of wounded veterans. You had to uh, load them up with the, you know, on, on the, they can't carry them up. They had to take a, a thing like a rope. Yeah. They could swing them up like they were, like they were, uh, yeah, swing them up over the top on the top, and they get they get on the bed over there, and they push them into the into the uh, hospital part of it. That's it. Orchestra again. There's no saxophonist. Oh, some trombones. Mm -hmm. the rough seas. Rough seas. Look yeah. at that. Oh, look. There's space for you to put stuff in. Uh, that's that's all gone now. So this is a, this this tells you where where the ship was, right? I don't know if the, that's where it was. It's been it's been around uh, quite a quite a long time. In fact, yeah. at the beginning it went up to. Oh, there it is. Yeah. You can read all about that there. And uh, this is where I got on. Where the heck is it? Liverpool? Uh, Wakefield? No, oh, I lost the year. This is 42. Oh, that was Here's the fire, September 3rd, 1942. And then there, this is 19, February 11th, 1944. Yeah. yeah. So that's when you got on. Oh yeah, I heard it. All Liverpool. Look at that! All those Liverpools. Yeah. And then around in Liverpool. That. Yeah, and of course we had one stop in France or something, and then uh, we had a couple stops in uh, in Italy. We had a stop in uh, Africa one time. You know, the northern part of Africa. Because we were carrying uh, 50 uh, nurses, and they were going overseas too. But by golly, they had to keep them. They must have been popular, yeah. They had to keep everybody out of there, you know, or from where they were. They weren't allowed. We weren't allowed to go anywhere near them. Uh, they had the uh, uh, Marines guarding it. So you can't. Can't get over. You can't go. Oh, sure, there. they had the Marines guarding it. Sure, <laughs> sure. Well, they, uh, what can I tell you, Kathy? I mean, I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know for sure. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay any dividends that way. So when you got out, you came back to Chicago. Yes, I did. What did you do then? Then I went back to the job that I had, and uh, when they told me. That I would be getting the same pay as when I left. Well, Licky, you know what Licky is, don't you? What is? Tall, real tall. Tall. Yeah. No, well, Licky. Well, you know. Yeah. My dad was a lived grew up in Cicero, and he was adopted. All his brothers and sisters were adopted. So my 
my they are all so blatantly ethnic, you know. My yeah, dad looks right, so Irish right. and his, his sister looks so Italian and his other sister looks you know, looks real Irish and they're all they're all of them I with got, this uh, Polish name. It's really funny. Yeah, I got I get calls or not calls, but uh, somebody will be asking like you. You say, well, are you Irish? Well ask me if I'm Irish. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I said, No, I'm not Irish. <laughs> And I, he said, "Where are you?" I said, "A Polish." You don't look like a Polish. Oh well <laughs> then. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah right. <laughs> I think I, I, I think we all. You could work at the library. You know, you could come here anytime. People want you to be whatever they are. Is so they right? want you to speak Russian or Polish or yeah, Ukrainian right. or Czech. Once I had a well, Czech lady, she Ukraine. said, she said, "Are you are you Czech?" And I said, "Yes." And she so she just went off, and I said, "I." <laughs> don't speak it. I'm real sorry. Yeah. But you that part of Poland that that sometimes Ukraine that sometimes Poland part yeah. of Poland yeah that's where my grandparents my parents, were from. Yeah, my parents came from uh, that area. My mother was a uh, a child without a, a mother for I don't know how many years. To my dad, uh, not my dad. Her her her, her husband. My grandfather. Yeah. He died, and so did uh, this one died, and that was it. Grandmother, you know, and my my mother had to go to live with an aunt or something. When it came time, we, she saved enough money. So how she got it, I don't know. Saved enough money to come to the United States. Wow. She was a little girl, and uh, the scenes I tell you about to see, you know. Well, they went through rough seas too, because they didn't have the ships at those times, at those times like they got today. Yeah. Today, you know, six days that are over. In fact, I think the Queen Mary can make it in four days. That's fast, you know. It's cutting a lot of water, but it's got to be water like that. Get these big waves, you know. Everybody gets sick. Can't have that either. Yeah. Yeah. So you, um, you were telling me about after you got back. If you got got out of the service, yeah, you were telling me about it that you went you went back to your old job, but they they wanted to pay right. you what they were paying you before. Yeah, right. And I couldn't afford that. I I sort of I, I had to make more money, and they said we can't give you any more money. So I, I went to another place, and uh, I was there for a week maybe, and they didn't like the way I was working. So okay, you know, you would come back. From service, they all want to help the serviceman, but he's got to be an ace, if you know what I'm saying. He can't be somebody that's still learning. I was still learning the trade. Yeah. They had no trade in the in the service, and in fact, my uh, one of my lieutenant uh, uh, chiefs uh, at the at the ship asked me what I was going to do when I got out, and I said, "Gee, I don't know. I might go back." To he said, "You know what you should do? Go down to the city hall." And ask for a job for stationary engineer. You know everything about the, you know the engineering of the ship, and that's no different than the than the buildings that you're going to work in. So okay, so I went down to the city hall after I got home, and and the guy says, "Can I help you?" And I said, "Yeah, I'm looking for a job." Oh, well, what kind of a job? Well, I want to be a stationary engineer. Yeah, oh, we got a lot of those. Got a wedding, must have met. That's a lot of BS, you know. I didn't know. But being young, I didn't pay much attention to that very well. If you can't hire me, you can't hire me, that's all. So uh, little by little, I found another job and back in the tool and die business. And uh, it was a pretty good job. I worked there for two, three years. After I got through with that, then I went to work at Kraft Foods, you know where Kraft Foods was? Down there by the Navy Pier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, they, they were over there. And I worked there for about a year. And uh, one of the fellows was asking me to be work, work part-time in his shop. And I worked part-time because I needed the money. And uh, it ended up that uh, when I got all through with all that stuff, they hired me, they asked me to come in full-time. So I quit craft food and went there full time. And then I went for another shop and another shop. And I spent uh, 
30 years in one shop. And then, of course, they uh, sold out. When they sold out, that was it. So the old guy, out. The young guy, said, you know, nice. Come on in here, you're nice and young. <laughs> Is that what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, that's the way that works. And of course, uh, I already had my, my training. I had uh, all the things that I wanted to do in the business, and that's that's what I did. So do you think that you you used anything you learned while you were in the service in your later life? Did you learn anything that you Oh, learned? yes. Cooperation. I learned I cooperated, and you know, don't get mad at somebody that, at, at somebody that uh, said they don't want to do something for you or whatever it is. You may not like it, but uh, you try to control yourself, and you don't want to be starting any wars. You just went through one, and uh, that's about it. I, I would I would say that uh, uh, it it gave me a, a very good uh, training as far as cooperation with a bunch of men. And uh, trying times, and it was all trying times. You know, everybody was scared, especially these uh, young guys like me when they got on the ship and then they're going out on a sail. Where's the convoy? Yeah. No convoy. <laughs> no convoy. You know, and I I was scared. I was really scared. So a couple of the guys on the ship that've been on the ship before, they said, No, we never travel with a, a convoy. We're too fast for the convoy. He says, when you're in a convoy, you're a sitting duck. Yeah, so I cool. thought that, and I, you know, that, that makes sense. So then all of a sudden, you go up and you'll see the sunrise, go up there and see the sunset, and go on, you know, do it, or go look around in the galley, play, play cards, you know, there's a lot of card games going on. Uh, no movies, no, uh, there's movies on there, but not, uh, you know, kind of interest you, and uh, it was it was it was nice. I, I got a good education out of it. I really feel I did. And then I saw part of the world I would never seen. I told my wife, "You want to go see uh, Europe?" What for? Oh, okay. So you never went back? No, I never went no. back. No. There's still time. Myself? Yeah. You want to go? With me? Sure. Oh, <laughs> we could have a good time. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I, I just kind of uh, missed that kind of a life. But then, like I said, put that away. Can I borrow that picture for a second? What picture? The picture of you, so I can scan it, so I have a copy of a picture of you. This one? Yeah. And if you want, I can fix your newspaper articles for you if you want. No, no not the newspaper. Animal. Newspapers are already. I'll shut up. I can fix it for you. Here, give me this. I'll be back. You can talk to the machine if you want to talk to the machine. Talk to the machine. Or you can wow, take wait. Out. I know what a thrill, huh? Yes. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna scan it and then email it to myself. Are you sure you don't want me to? Because I can scan other stuff if you want a digital copy. You can use it in a computer. Or you Did you want to see any pictures? I could do them. Then we add them to your transcript and we print them. We put them in the back of your transcript so people mm -hmm. that are reading, they can see them. If you want, and I can give them back to you. What's that a picture of? Or was that just, you're just somebody who's taking notes on the back of something? Yes? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Must have been something important at the time. Can't be important. You mean these pictures? Yeah. What do you think? Well, it's up to you. How long will it take? Yeah. Half hour. Time is it? Or I can give them back to you. I can borrow them and give them back to you. It's about three thirty. No, I don't want to leave any pictures. Uh, not, not the. Just tell me about the USO. Oh yeah, the USO. We uh, used to go to them quite often. You know, to the USO because that's where you got free tickets and got free cokes. When you were in Boston, or when you yeah, were in Boston, Boston, and in uh, when I was on the Cape. And things like that. So anyway, you go, we go out and uh, go in there, and, and they'd say, "Let's let's sing song, you know." So let's you know try to make you feel relaxed. Yeah. So they come up and they say, uh, "Let's sing the 
the army song, you know, here comes the chasing on, uh, chasing the rolling on or something. Then they come up with the Air Force uh, or the uh, Marines, the Navy song. And when it came to the Coast Guard song, you know, they used to sing that and they used to sing uh, Semper Paratus is our guide. I don't know if you've ever heard our song. No. Semper Paratus is our guide and all that stuff. And then, of course, at the end, it says, uh, at the Air Corps, they'd uh, say, and nothing can stop the Army Air Corps. And the sky is just there, except the Coast Guard. <laughs> 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 Yeah, some of those guys, you know, you're going to be Coast Guard. Yeah. What are you trying to do? But with this, yeah. I'm trying to find the end of the film class, but I think she ran out and she doesn't know. If I can not find the end of the tape. Yeah, she's out of it. There it is. Sorry. So you went and sang. Did you dance? Oh, sure we danced. Yeah, I got offers. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Like what? Well, I don't like a dance. And did you dance? Did you tell your wife when you danced with of other girls? Not. You didn't tell her? No. I would have told her. No. Did you write letters to her while you were on the ship? Oh, sure I wrote letters. All the time. And did she write back? She wrote back. That's nice. Yeah. Did well, you have to censor what you were saying? Censor? You know, did you have to did you have to watch what you were saying because you weren't allowed to were there things you weren't allowed to say? No, I didn't have to censor anything. No. They didn't care where you were where you were or where you well, were going or Well what, what do you say about a ship, you know, yeah. You can't mail it until you get off and so on and so forth. You don't know where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that was just a scoop. And uh, that's what happened with the USO. Of course, uh, one of the USOs I used to go to was at uh, in Hyannisport, in uh, on the Cape, yeah. Cape Cod. It was Hyannis. That's right close to where uh, Kennedy used to live. Yeah. The Kennedy, you know, family. Yeah. yeah. So I used to uh, go over there when I had a liberty, because there was no place else to go. You, you know, you couldn't get around anywhere. It was too easy. We went in town. That was a little town there, and had this U.S.O. and we went in there. And I used to ask the ladies over there. Uh, she gave me change uh, for something or other, and then I looked and I saw Liberty had quarters, nickels, yeah. and dimes. And I said, "You get many of these?" He said, oh, yeah, we had quite a few, you know, so on and so forth. And I said, would you save these for me? I, I, I'm saving them. Oh, I'll be glad to. So maybe I, next time I went in there, I'd 45, 50 cents, or maybe 75 cents of coins. Wow. So I put them in an envelope and sent them home to my wife. She got them, you know, she sent me a letter and said, I got your the coins, it was, uh, 75 or whatever cents in them. Yeah. But that's when they had honest people working in the post office. Today, you, you send anything in the post office. You think you're going to do that now? Ugh. They open up envelopes and everything. Really? Yeah, I don't trust them at all. Mm. And if you want to send anything, you got to insure it. Yeah, that troubles me. Yeah. Also. Okay. The miracle of filmoblast. It's non acidic, so it won't wreck your paper. Magical. Is it really? It's magical. I love so much. We use it to fix old books, and I did yeah, I think you're taking such good care of me. I'm getting worried. Yeah. <laughs> right. You should be worried. That's how librarians are. Okay. Yeah, some, I'm gonna. Are you fixing this up for me? Fixing that up for me? Yeah, you know we, we're like that here. I uh. I had all these pictures in the drawer, and every time somebody came over want to see something or other, and I had to go in the drawer and get them out. Yeah. And that was uh, what it amounted to. And they fell and it's apart. getting to the point where I saw that that, uh, that thing upstairs, you know, about uh, 
show him pictures and, and whatever. Yeah. I thought, well, Jesus would be a good chance to get rid of my pictures. You know, I don't want to get rid of them. I want to keep them. But to show them off. Yeah, to show them off. And if yeah. you if you do it. Uh, if we put them on. You want us to put them on display? We can put them on display. Well, you put them on display and say, uh, you can put a little notation on there on the bottom someplace. If you were a serviceman and uh, and, uh, and travel across the ocean, Atlantic Ocean, with with the ship, let us know. Yeah. Take their name and all that. And I'd like to talk to them and say how they enjoy the trip and go back. And, Fifty years ago, <laughs> I don't remember anything. Yeah, of course, yeah. there's not many left anymore. Yeah, especially those guys who were in the army. I have, I have very few. We t I talked to a lot of Navy guys. I talked to a CB. Oh yeah. And uh, he had quite an experience. Yeah, it was very interesting. Yeah. I thought, and uh, but not so many army guys. Only a couple army guys. A lot of guys who work in the library. You know, we get a lot of. Oh. The, pa the library pages, Mr. Jacobs, Chuck. No authors? <laughs> huh? You're a troublemaker. Oh. Who, me? In your eyes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Troublemaker all the time, troublemaking. All right, let's see. Send them home. Send them home, huh? Yep. To make their trouble elsewhere? Make it somebody else's problem? I don't think so. Let's see if we can get this part. The advantage of little fingers. The only advantage there is of little fingers. Are you going to look that one up? I will look it up and see if I can get a better copy for you because it'll have the names and everything on the bottom. Will it? Yeah, it might not be as pretty a copy of the picture though. Oh? Because the, um, the Tribune database. Yeah, I think that was in the Tribune. They scan them all, so yeah. If it's in the, if it's from the trib, which I would think so because it's the, you know, it's about local. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. <coughs> Who else is falling off here? What are we doing? Press the send. I love film class. I just think it's the greatest thing. I had a guy who had a big old map. He was following the Ninth Army, and he had a big map. And we, his map was falling apart, so we fixed it. With that stuff? With this stuff, yeah. I'll be darned. Yeah. It's nice because it won't wreck the paper. Is that right? Yeah. So it's tape for your paper. So here's the thing. I taped across the edge, so you might want to take out, I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and we'll take out this part. I put that in under the glass in my dresser. Yeah? Yeah. I'll and it, and it lived more. there, yeah. It looks like, I mean, you, it's pretty good for a for a 50-year-old piece of paper. It's right, it sure a piece is. of newsprint. The, the newsprint 